What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Move Rewind and today I'll be reviewing Casualty Series 30. So without further ado, let's get into it. The 30th series of Casualty commenced airing on the 29th of August 2015 and concluded after 43 episodes on the 30th of July 2015. There's a lot of great stuff to talk about with series 30 so let's get on with the review. Series 30 really does feel like the beginning of Casualty's 30th anniversary celebrations because obviously in 2016 Casualty would celebrate 30 years on air. The longest running medical drama in the world and obviously it's a massive credit to the fact that they managed to get to that place and still be as popular as they are. So Series 30 has a lot of uh, special episodes which are dedicated to celebrating this historic milestone. In 2016 the show celebrated its 1000th episode which of course is a massive achievement in itself. The opening two episodes of Series 30, A Child's Heart, are fantastic. I think I said they were some of my favourite episodes of all time for the simple reason they are the only episodes where I honestly thought Charlie Fairhead was being killed off. A Child's Heart follows the events of uh, Dylan's boat being blown up at, in the aftermath of Zoe and Max's disastrous wedding. And Charlie rescues Zoe from the ice cold water but then suffers a heart attack. And it looks like he might die. And I have to admit I remember watching this episode at the time and thinking, oh my god they're going to kill Charlie off. Obviously I was wrong, they didn't kill Charlie off. But that opening two part storyline sets the tone for series 30 in the sense that it's a very strong series with very good writing and of course the acting is on top form like many, most series of Casualty. There's also a lot of impressive stunt work in series 30, that's one thing I noticed on rewatch um, and that adds a certain dramatic edge to a lot of the storylines which I think is a great thing. Casualty is well known for its stunt work and sometimes I wish that modern Casualty would take note because the stunt work really does give Casualty that uniqueness which other drama series don't have. So yeah, I'm really impressed with Series 30's stunt work. Definitely modern Casualty could take note from that. Obviously the main thing which we all love about Casualty is the character driven storylines and there are plenty in Series 30. Series 30 of Casualty has an impressive cast so as always You've got the actors there, all you need is the good storylines, and you've got good storylines in Series 30. There are plenty of relationships in Series 30. You have the on and off relationship between Connie and Jacob. I really like that relationship because Amanda Meelan and Charles Venn have great chemistry together, and they make that relationship between Connie and Jacob feel very real. You also have a more doomed relationship between Ian Dean and Rita Freeman, that one was never really going to work. Unlike modern casualty, Ian Dean back then was very uh, a, a lad. He didn't really want to settle down with anyone and Rita, bless her, she just couldn't understand that and felt really um, taken for granted where you can understand where she's coming from because she thought they were exclusive whereas Ian makes it clear they're not. But out of all the relationships, it's the one between paramedic Dixie and a new paramedic, Jess, who she encounters. Jess has a daughter, Olivia, who uh, Jess is in an abusive relationship with her partner. Dixie manages to help her get out of that relationship and then decides she's going to go off with Jess and Olivia into the sunset for a new life. And I really like Dixie's departure. Given all the trauma she went through after, Di after Jeff's death, Dixie deserved a happy ever after, so I'm glad she got one at the end of this series. Ethan and Cal have a very dramatic storyline in series 30 when they find out that not only are they adopted, not only does their mother have degenerative Huntington's disease, but Ethan has tested positive for Huntington's disease as well, which is a truly heartbreaking moment, and it's a real... Um, development in Ethan's character. It really does change Ethan's perspective on things and I think that's something which going forward it all comes back to the fact that Ethan had to deal with this life-changing discovery which he still I think even in later series struggled to deal with. I really like the tension at first between Ethan and Cal, how Ethan just can't understand why Cal seems to get all the luck while he gets none but then of course we get 
when they come back together, we get Ethan's be more cow motive. He's going to be more like cow. And I think it's great just seeing the two brothers get on. We're so used to seeing them go head to head in a competition. It's great to actually see them get on and for Ethan to actually be inspired by his brother to be a bit more confident, a bit more easygoing. So yeah, I really like Ethan and Cal's uh, brotherly friendship in this series. It really does um, bring out a new side to each of them and the storyline they're involved with is very dramatic. We also have new recruit Alicia Monroe portrayed by Chelsea Halfpenny. Originally only supposed to be in a couple of episodes where we see her getting bullied by her mentor Lily Chow which is a great storyline because of course Lily herself was treated very harshly by her mentor Ash a couple of years ago so it's great to see how the tables have turned and now Lily is the one bullying Alicia but obviously the writers were impressed with the character of Alicia because she comes back at the end of the series and I think it's great. Alicia is a very bubbly personality and a great breath of fresh air compared to some of the other characters who were in casualty at the time so I'm glad they brought her back. There are quite a few new characters introduced in series 30 as well. We see paramedic Jez Andrews. I really like Jez, you know, he's no real replacement for Dixie but he does have a good rapport with Ian so those two work quite well as a paramedic duo. We have new nurse David Hyde. Love David from the moment he entered the ED. Such a unique character and Jason Durr as an actor just brings that character to life. I cannot see any other actor portraying that character. And we get new consultant Elle Gardner. Now, Elle in series 30, she's all right. You know, she makes a few mistakes. Um, <laughs> she tells everyone that Charlie stole drugs, so he's suspended. So a lot of the ED staff don't like her. And also she has quite close links to Henrik Hansen, the CEO. So obviously Connie as clinical lead can't stand her. Um, so it's really fun to see Connie get so jealous of Elle, especially as she has quite a strong friendship with Jacob. So Elle, Elle is okay um, in series 30. I think um, they introduced her quite well as they did with Jez and David. Like these are all good characters. But you don't really see loads of storylines happening with them in series 30. They're just there to kind of establish themselves as characters for series 31. Which is not a bad thing because they are all pretty good characters. We also see a number of departures in series 30. As I said, Dixie's departure is very well done. We also see Nurse Lofty leaves. Now he was under increasing pressure uh, to do his job. He became a senior nurse um, and he just really couldn't cope with the responsibility. And he feels guilty when... He performs um, a resuscitation on a patient and an agency nurse is given an electric shock by mistake and he feels incredibly guilty, so leaves. Uh, Lofty was of course supposed to come back, but he in turn went on to Holby C. But I did like his departure from this series. I thought it was done quite well. Um, we also see Zoe leave. Uh, Zoe Hanna, of course, been in the programme for nearly nine years at this point. And I remember watching that episode when we didn't know that Zoe was leaving. Um, and then when it was found out that she was leaving, we wondered if Max was going to go with her and we get those heartbreaking scenes at the airport when Zoe basically says to Max, you know, you deserve better than me. I'm a car crash. I need a fresh start. So it was heartbreaking that Max got left behind, but Zoe did it for the right reasons. Rita Freeman, she leaves by the end of the series through her own actions because she lies she says to ian in an attempt to try and keep ian in a relationship she says that her ex mark who was a convicted paedophile was harassing her and beating her up and then it turns out she was lying so she can't face any of the ed staff so decides to leave so i struggle to have sympathy for rita because it was her own actions which led to that moment. She didn't need to lie, and if she didn't lie, she wouldn't have had to leave. But obviously for me, the standout departure for the series, as well as a storyline which really stood out for me, was Big Mac's drug addiction storyline. Big Mac becomes addicted to prescription medication during this series, and I think uh, Charles Dale as an actor does a fantastic job portraying a more vulnerable side to the often comedic Big Mac. Plus, his departure got to me for some reason. I actually had a tear in my eye. I don't know what it is. It's just the fact that he rides off um, from the ED on his motorbike with all the staff cheering his name. And then we get that lovely scene of him at the uh, drug addiction meeting where he gives Charlie a massive hug, says sorry, and then leaves. And I just really loved Big Mac's departure. He'd been on the program for nearly nine years at that point, And it was just a really well done departure. And in addition, I just want to mention one storyline 
near the end of the series which really stood out to me and it involves Dylan Keogh. Dylan Keogh, a fan favourite. Uh, he overcomes his OCD in this series. He gets it under control. He also has a great friendship with Lofty during this series which of course ends on a bit of a sour note when Lofty leaves but it was nice to see Dylan actually uh, get a proper friend. Obviously he already had Zoe but it was good to see him get another friend in Lofty as well but I really like the storyline with him and his estranged father Brian. Obviously Brian was introduced for one episode in series 29. We didn't really find out that much except the fact that he treated him and his mother quite badly and that's why Dylan resents him so much. In this series Brian returns with his new partner and Dylan's half-sister, who's a baby. And I think there's some great scenes, because obviously Dylan and Brian, you there are clear similarities between them, but you can understand why Dylan is so conflicted. Dylan is the man he is because of his father. His father neglected him. His father didn't treat him well. So it's great to see Dylan's, um, Dylan's mask kind of be broken down. And we get to see a more vulnerable side to Dylan, which we didn't really see before. So yeah, I really enjoyed uh, delving into Dylan's backstory a bit more, removing some of that mysterious nature about the character, and really getting to see why Dylan is the way he is. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. Obviously, Series 30 of Casualty, it is a really strong series of casualty, like most series are. I think modern casualty writers could look back at this series um, and, you know, just take some just take some points on the, the stunt work and the level of accidents and emergencies they actually have, because that's what makes series casualty, and I don't want casualty to lose that, because then it just becomes like any other drama on TV, which, you know, the stunts are what make casualty unique as a medical drama. So yeah, I really enjoyed series 30. I can't wait to move on to series 31, which is of course the 30th anniversary series. So there's a lot of great moments during that series. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one. See ya.